As Irvine says in the article, the perfect outcome would have been for myself and the Green Party candidate, Constant Goodell Newton, to both receive 3% of the vote so we could meet the arbitrary benchmark set by Ohio Republicans to maintain ballot access for our political parties for the next four years. Another aspect of the perfect outcome would have been for our total amounts of votes to cause Republican Mike DeWine to lose to Democrat Richard Cordray. The Ohio Republican Party has had a stranglehold on our state government for far too long, as evidenced by the aforementioned 3% benchmark being set for minor parties and signed into law at all. The Ohio Republicans set a arbitrary benchmark of 3%, which means who they control who their opponents get to be. It's basically the Democrats. This ensures that voters show a disdain in the binary and that disdain turns into apathy and cynicism. It also blocks any outside voices from coming into the narrative. It removes the idea of choice and makes you vote for a letter a color or a mascot instead of ideas and policies. We can see the same thing executed by the Democrats in the primaries now. They set arbitrary benchmarks in order to get rid of any progressive voice so their corporate paid off candidates can gang up on the candidate that's setting records and was cheated out of the last election. I am of course talking about one Bernie Sanders. The idea also pushes the narrative that there are only two voices allowed in American politics, Democrat or Republican. I mean, it's a hack idea. It's no different than the comedian that goes on stage and makes jokes about how white people do a thing like this, and but black people do a thing like that. Or women are one way and men are another. Right? Binary views hammer down generalization, cut off the diversity of thought, and engage us into black or white lines of thought. And that's the question we should all have. What about brown or gray or Roy G. Biv? I mean, if it's all black or white, red or blue, then why the hell does Crayola have the need for so many damn colors, right? We can just have two really big crayons and just call it a day. Speaking of hacks, on a recent episode of his show, Bill Maher did a monologue where he addressed the idea of binary. In the monologue, Marr makes the argument that we have many flavors of Pop-Tarts and Gatorade, but when it comes down to politics, there are only two choices. And he boasts that that is a good thing. Good thing for who? Regardless of who wins, Marr gets to keep his show and get richer with his pack generalizing jokes that show us how out of touch he really is while the rest of us have to deal with stagnant wages, unaffordable health care, and ever-expanding prison system. But hey, we have a thousand flavors of Gatorade we can choke down after we get arrested for a nonviolent crime or protesting the dream of oligarchy. Yay for Yellow 65! <clears throat> Mar also points out that a lot of other countries have multiple parties and we should be excited that we only have two i mean this is basically his smug way of saying hey americans you guys can't handle all this choice it's his fun very special way of calling us all dumb americans aren't dumb i mean the middle class is much smarter than they are convinced to be once they shed the programming from the propaganda of the american war economy perpetuated by both parties then we'd effectively be able to vote for a third, fourth, or fifth party without this childish blame gaming. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content that's on this video, you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy. It talks about a lot of the same issues that you hear in these videos. Uh, and I've got dates coming up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Champaign, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Bloomington, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for my entire tour schedule. And all the tickets and details for these shows, you can go to my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. 
www.thinkandgrowthpodcast.com. And while you're there, you can uh, sign up for my email list. You can become a patron. You can check out past episodes of this shows, as well as getting your uh, tickets and details for all of my live tour dates. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the road.